Thank you all very much. Okay, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you all very much for your attendance this evening. And we'll start with, oh, can I just make sure if you're not talking that you have your um, mute button on, please? Pol uh, first of all, agenda item one, do we have any apologies for absence? Sorry, Chairman, would you mind just reading the recording statement? I haven't got it. Can you read it? Yep, that's okay. Just for um, for attendees who are listening in and committee members, this meeting will be recorded for future archive viewing. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Agenda item one was apologies for absence. Did we have any? No. Agenda item two. Just so you're aware, Chairman, Councillor Nugent Finn um, is slightly delayed, but she is planning to join us. Thank you. Agenda item two is the minutes of the meeting held on the 15th of September. Would you like me to go through it page by page, or you're happy to move on block? Anybody? Move the minutes. Thank you, John. Thank move you. on block, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Agenda item four, uh, for reference, is the coronavirus recovery strategy. And um, Lance, can you talk us through this, please? So, sorry, Chairman, to interrupt, but can I just check there aren't any declarations of interest this evening, please? Sorry, Amy. OK, Thank I'll you. take that as declarations. Thank you. Sorry, Lance. Agenda item four, yours. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I, what we have here is a is a reference from from cabinet, uh, and I think colleagues will be uh, or members will be aware from the the last scrutiny committee meeting that we went uh, in some depth really uh, about the response that social services had made uh, to the coronavirus and and. and uh, essentially, I suppose we covered probably the best part of six months um, detailed activity and, and, and frantic activity, I would probably say, uh, in, in terms of how we would respond to, how we had to respond to, to, to the virus. What we stopped short of last time really was describing um, the recovery arrangements uh, in terms of actually what we were going to do going forward. And I think at the point that this report went to Cabinet, is it was looking very much like um, you know the the prevalence of the virus uh, was continuing to decrease, um, and and we were hoping that we would still be in position where where the virus was was um, uh, extremely low in terms of prevalence across the community. Obviously, things have deteriorated uh, since that report uh, was was written, um, and I think you know one of the things that is included within the appendix to the cabinet report really um, is a recognition that actually should things deteriorate um, that that we would need to I think the words used in here a ramp back as as needed uh, recognizing that we we may need to to go back into those kind of more protective measures that we had uh, put in place um, uh, uh, across um, the, the services and I think probably the position that that we find ourselves in 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 social services and I'm sure Dave would be able to comment in a, in a little bit in terms of, of leisure as well but from from social services is that that our planned recovery has has predominantly paused um, it doesn't mean that we have stopped but but um, it's more to do with planning how we will recover now rather than actually continuing to open up, if you like, services that had had to, to close because of the, the, the prevalence. So as we're just, just going back to, to the, the cabinet report and the appendix, it's probably worth me just quickly whizzing through the appendix and then we'll um, take Take, I'm happy to take any questions. Although Dave might like to to add a, a, a relevant point about whether you know what position within within um, leisure services and, and Rachel and Suzanne will hopefully step in just just to kind of update in terms of 
of their areas. So, so rather than repeat what we discussed last time, um, uh, what I was going to suggest that we did really was, was look um, probably uh, at the um, uh, appendix, probably from, uh, I think it's page 29, where it starts to talk about transition um and the kind of um changes that we were looking at at, at reintroducing uh, and services that we were reintroducing so i think you know it talks about in terms of obviously outside of this committee area but the schools reopening and 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 so on so we'll, we'll all be familiar with 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 that kind of uh, reduction in restrictions and what what that meant um and then i suppose we we have formed um as part of our recovery themes and strategy, we've made sure that that links back to a corporate uh, service plan. So it, what we're doing within within social care isn't sitting in in isolation. Um, and I think you know uh, within this um, presentation, you see um, uh, a reiteration of the uh, corporate well-being uh, objectives. And then we start to look into a bit more detail in terms of recovery themes. Um, and I suppose for 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 social care, if I'm honest, the majority of those themes sit uh, within a section called supporting people at home in in their community. Um, there's, there are other ones uh, that you'll see uh, back about the environment, and also one that we probably particularly come into is probably working with and for our communities. So, um, rather than repeat what's in 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 this presentation, I thought it would just be helpful to build a bit on what we described last time in terms of social services, um, and I'll pick out the 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 elements of the service for resource management and safeguarding department uh, and Rachel and Suzanne do children's and, and adults but last time we talked very much about the establishment of a PPE team so if I start with with that um, what we've been looking at at the moment uh, is actually developing we've developed a team plan for that PPE team we're looking to establish that on a more permanent basis uh, I say more permanent is not it's not entirely permanent because we recognize that hopefully at some point we will be out of this. Welsh Government have written to us in the last few days to say that they will continue to provide us with PPE for the duration of the pandemic. Um, the next one for us that I thought was be be interesting for, for members is, is to um, let you know about uh, DEWIS. So DEWIS is the information system that members of the public can access and so we are continuing to update uh, and develop that in light of of COVID-19 obviously that's going to contain some some different messages within that um, and I suppose the last one from a resource management and safeguarding perspective was just to mention the regional training unit which um, a report on that so social services have a regional training unit with Cardiff uh, and a report on that will be coming to cabinet on in due course that was set up for uh, um, three years initially and um, what we found is that that throughout COVID-19 we've been working very closely with our local providers and we didn't want to lose that that really positive arrangements that we've got working with them and we felt that it would be beneficial to 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 continue to work more closely so so I suppose that those were the kind of key things I thought from resource management and safeguarding. I, I don't know whether, um, if Chair, if I'm permitted to ask Rachel and Suzanne and, and Dave to step in to briefly just describe from their perspective. Yeah, Thank you. Rachel? Thank you, Councillor. I mean, there are actions uh, obviously there for, for children as well in terms of recovery. I think it, it, it's probably um, helpful to, to summarise um, them in the context of what we're trying to do, which is really consolidating um, practice in the current and evolving context. So there's no question that, that practice for us, whether that's social work or, or, or other forms of practice across the division, it is different. Um, and we're, we're trying hard to, to consolidate um, our practice in, in the current and evolving situation in a way that's responsive. So there are various um, examples of, of, of how we've done that um, and that's our evolving um, family risk management plan which wasn't only relevant at the, at the start of the pandemic but is helping us 
um, to inform activity um, with children and families and our creative and extended use of what we're calling uh, COVID assessed um, spaces to, to meet with children and families where, where home environments uh, aren't always suitable for every visit. Um, but that, doesn't clear, that clearly doesn't mean that we're not, um, we're not in homes because, we're, because we are. Um, and, and I think the other, the other theme for us is, is applying learning um, that the pandemic has challenged us, continues to challenge us, but, but it's also afforded us opportunities to learn. Uh, and one of those is, is the way that virtual communication is, is becoming um, central at the moment in terms of how we communicate with children and families and obviously with, with, with other partners, yourselves included. Um, but I think it can, it, we recognise that it can become a real and sustainable method of communicating with families alongside uh, the face-to-face -face contact that, that we'll have. And just to give you a really a really real and practical example of, of, of where we've seen resumption, so recovery, um, one of the things that, that, we, that we needed to pause um, was uh, introductions between children with a plan for, for adoption um, who had been matched into adoptive placements, that those, that those arrangements paused. And what we do now is we risk assess um, the, those introductions, uh, recognising that, that that delay simply isn't acceptable um, for children, that, that uncertainty. Um, and those, those things have, have resumed. So there's examples across the service where, where we've paused and where we've resumed. So those that what you might call individual recoveries for those individual children. Uh, but on a much larger scale, what that's really about is is achieving outcomes for children, achieving in that context permanence for children, um, but but also having a having a real focus on our activity, for example, in terms of how we safely and uh, reduce our numbers of children looked after. That that adoption is an exit from care, and for some children, um, that that's a that's a really positive outcome um, for them. So, again, like Lance, trying to trying to take pick out some um, some themes um, and share those with you. Thank you. Suzanne? Thank you, Chair. Um, and and staying with that, it's it's similar in adult services uh, and, and again, not wanting to repeat what's been said before. Um, we are looking at care and support at home uh, and trying to balance the risks between uh, the virus itself uh, and also ensuring that we are in people's homes, assessing their situation and, and understanding where they are at the moment. Um, it's only sustainable to not be in people's homes in the numbers that we, we were for a short period of time because as we go into winter months we know that it becomes uh, more problematic and where people are trying to sustain and be resilient then uh, you know we need to check that that is, is still the case um, and if not be able to act. And so, so we are in a situation with care and support within people's own homes is it ensuring that we're trying to, to assess where appropriate uh, and, and picking up on Rachel's point around the use of digital means to ensure that, that we, we use that in assessments, in reviews and in, in conversations with individuals and their families. Um, and so what we're trying to do is trying to minimise the amount of time in a person's home um, by ensuring that we're doing assessments either over the phone or, or through digital means and then being in the home for a minimum amount of time possible. Um, and so things like that, that's a change in, in our practice and trying to in, encourage that to, to happen across our workforce. Um, and, and just to reassure as well that at the beginning of the pandemic, we, we needed to, to look at contingency plans in case our domiciliary care um, uh, workforce was, was impacted. Uh, we were very fortunate that they weren't impacted in the numbers that we anticipated and we were planning for, uh, but it's, it's a continuous um, process. And so that is again, part of recovery and renewal to keep reviewing those contingency plans and, and ensure that they are fit for purpose and ensure that we are assessing individuals and, and prioritising their needs accordingly so to ensure that, that members are reassured that that continues to happen. Um, we were fortunate we didn't have to, to do those contingency plans earlier in the year, and, and, and so it's, it's something that we need to flex according to where we are in relation to recovery and, and local lockdowns, et cetera, and dependent on what's happening with the workforce. The other area that I thought would be of, of interest to members was around day service provision. Um, and so, again, we know that, um, it, that there, there will be a, a, a cohort of, of individuals who will, will, be, will who'll be keen to return to day services, as was, um, and have, need, need to have that stimulation of a day opportunity, uh, interaction with other people. 
um, and also the people that they may live with that care for them for them to have the ability to have some respite. Uh, and we are keen to, to look at that, but again, balancing the risks between um, managing our response to the virus and managing people's needs. Um, and so we're at the stage where we're planning for, um, for a return to day services subject to approval. Um, and, but we are looking at that uh, in a very small number um, in, and ensuring that they're in COVID safe premises and practices uh, just to, to make sure that that happens. Um, and that's the same for our internal provision across uh, adult services, so learning disability, physical disabilities and older persons. Uh, and we're also looking at that with external providers as well, uh, ensuring that risk assessments are robust um, and satisfactory before we, in, we, we seek to, to have anybody return to day services. Um, so that's uh, where we are in terms of um, recovery on, on that part. And the final part I just wanted to bring to members' attention was around um, our, our own staff and care management teams. Um, keeping an eye on in terms of staff well-being and trying to ensure that they have access to premises again safely for on task based um, uh, functions uh, in, in order that they, they have the ability that those that are struggling to work from home um, for a number of different reasons that we, we've tried to, to ensure that we are uh, managing their, their well-being and, and supporting them through this at the moment. And that is a significant part of our recovery in adult services uh, where we are compromised by some premises issues uh, in that uh, currently the, the Vale Community Resource Service is in, in, in an alternative building to its normal home. Um, and so we are working with partners to try to find a solution. I'm happy to take any questions or, or any comments. Thank you, Thank you Susan. Sarah. Does anybody have anything they would like to say to Lance, Suzanne or Rachel? Neil? Yeah, I, sorry, yeah, I was going to ask Rachel, um, with the um, schools going back, there was some anecdotal uh, evidence that the number of children reporting incidents over the summer as, uh, as a result of lockdown and uh, domestic uh, violence uh, issues had gone up and I'm wondering whether that's that's now being evidenced within the within your, your section and what sort of pressures that's now putting on you please Rachel thank you um, thank you Councillor. we we we, um, we actually undertook a demand review um, in August looking at some of our key areas one of which is, is the front door, another is child protection register, CLA numbers, etc. Um, and we, at that point, we, we were we were anticipating, as, as you described, a heightened um, uh, position when, when schools returned, um, to the point that we um, weren't content to conclude our review in August, and we're actually meeting um, towards the end of this month to, to properly collate that information. On, on a weekly basis, I can tell you that those um, those numbers remain high in terms of contacts into the department and the more detailed analysis that we'll do at the end of October will give us a, a greater indication um, but, but there's no question that, that, that schools returning has had has had an impact um, we've also maintained the vulnerable children tactical group which is a cross directorate um, group so that we can consider um, keep an eye on on children's well-being in terms of, of their return, um, being sure that we had services to, to respond to them, so that schools are supported in signposting, um, et cetera. Um, and also um, in relation to planning a play provision for October half term in the same way that we did for, for the summer, um, recognising that pressures in families um, are continuing um, and that provision is currently being referred to um, and is very much in partnership um, with colleagues in, in Dave's team, uh, and, and we're grateful for that for that continuing uh, relationship and, and cooperation to to support our vulnerable families, um, which is obviously broader than than children looked after, but certainly those known to to us in terms of care and support. Thank you, Rachel. Yeah. Has anybody Thanks else got much. any questions they'd like to ask or any? I'm just um, pleased that um, you found some positives out of this terrible pandemic. And you are learning things that you can now use when this is all over as well. Um, I was concerned that the adoption had to be put on hold for a while, and I'm really pleased that that is now moving ahead. And um, the day services are being looked into because this is, well, as you know, it's such an important thing in so many people's lives. 
and thank you for all the work that you're doing. Dave, would you like to brief us on anything new to do with leisure services? Yeah, it's a little bit more of a, a mixed picture as far as my services are concerned. Obviously, leisure centres are now fully open. Uh, I wouldn't say fully operational. It is a greatly reduced service with the restrictions we've got in place. Uh, and understandably, a, a large number of our customers have chosen not to return at the current times. And financially, that is putting pressure on the services. And there will be a report to Cabinet uh, detailing that very, very shortly. Um, we've not been allowed to recommence our national exercise referral scheme. Public Health Wales have, have given us instructions that we're not allowed to do it in person at the moment. So that's still a virtual scheme. And we are contacting clients uh, by telephone and just advising them to, in terms of what's going on. Uh, we have now been allowed to repurpose staff that are involved in NERS by Public Health Wales, which we haven't been able to do to date. So there are opportunities there if it is COVID related. And again, I'm keen to speak to colleagues uh, to what opportunities may exist for those members of staff. Um, in, in reverse of that, in sports development, we've now likely to be informed by Sports Council this week. We've been verbally informed, but we're still waiting for confirmation in writing where we have been able to repurpose staff that uh, they financially support that's likely to end and they now want us to be planning for uh, the resumption of sports development activities which is difficult in the current climate they are announcing new initiatives to help us with sports clubs and to help particularly with the over 60s and we're very keen to see how that sort of works with the restrictions that we've got in terms of the nurse scheme at the moment so that could be particularly challenging Rachel's already touched on play and obviously play services are continuing where it's applicable to do so and where that support is required. And I think that's been most welcomed by our communities. And again, I'm very grateful for the very positive comments that, that Rachel's already given. Thank you, Chair. Anybody got any questions for Dave? No? Well, I'm sure I can speak, oh, Neil? Yes, yes, yeah, sorry, Chair, but uh, um, Dave, um, I'm aware that the um, Leisure Centre in Penarth, the swimming there, is fully booked, all the, the few sessions that they have. They, they, I, I think they, they have quite a limited number of sessions, and they're each limited to 45 minutes. Is there capacity, is there scope, do you think, for uh, looking at possibly more sessions? Because certainly, as I say, the ones that are there now are being fully booked, and I'm aware that people are finding it difficult to to find gaps. Uh, um, I mean, people are getting on very quickly, and, uh, and pe people just can't get booked in because there's no scope. I think we very much understand those uh, frustrations that people have got at the moment with the uh, restrictions that we have got in place. We are working very closely with Legacy in terms of what opportunities are out there and expanding those opportunities, but being very mindful of the restrictions that we have to operate in. Um, you know, uh, I think it's very important to point out that some of our competitors have had uh, improvement notices, and one of our competitors has actually been given a closure notice. Uh, we're very conscious that we represent the Vale of Morgan Council and we've got to provide services that meet with the restrictions that are currently in place. So if people are frustrated, I do apologise, but it's very, very important that our services are of the, of the highest quality. And we have been re-emphasising that to legacy in terms of them introducing services. And a good example of that is in, in swimming is where we've had to reduce the capacities in terms of swimming lessons to meet with the restrictions that have been placed upon us. So I do apologise, Neil, if people haven't been able to, to access uh, as much swimming as they would like, and hopefully the, the situation will improve over the coming months. OK, Neil. OK, well, that takes us on to um, Agenda IT5, but first of all, can you pass on to the staff? Um, I'm sure I speak on behalf of all the committee. Um, thank them very much for all the work that they are doing under such a difficult situation at the moment. And agenda item five is any items which 
the chairman has decided they're urgent. I have none. Um, and there are no part two items. So thank you all very much. For chair, uh, chair, chair, before we finish, can I just raise one thing for, for forward planning? Uh, if you remember last year, uh, about this time last year, I was um, uh, I brought to the attention of the of the uh, 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 of the scrutiny committee the triage system that was being introduced in Penarth in GP surgery in Penarth. That was the plan was to roll that out across the county over the, over the coming period. Of course, that's been on hold now uh, due to unforeseen circumstances at the time. However, I understand that Tom Bowring now has a presentation on the triage, on the GP triage uh, setup and, and what the plan is. And I think that it would be helpful if that was brought to this committee uh, at a fairly fairly soon date uh, for us to hear what's, what, what the provisions are, what the proposals are. Personally, I think the, the actual triage ideas are excellent. There are concerns in terms of the way it's operating in certain or, or it's potentially operating in certain surgeries uh who, who perhaps aren't aren't taking it in the same way as others might but the 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 the, the, the system will be introduced i believe so i think this committee needs to know about it and I, as i say i'd like to see it come as soon as possible i'm sure that that can be arranged thank you for bringing it back to our attention neil anybody else got anything they'd like to say on that no there. Yeah, Lance. I, 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 I'm not sure of the report that um, you're referring to, of Tom's, and maybe Sus Suzanne is is aware of it. I suppose, from a from a social services point of view, the the GP triage service is obviously it's a health service, um, and I I'm aware that we were obviously supportive of that bid and transformation fund because it it was going to help a known problem that our Vale residents were experiencing. I suppose it, to me, it's not a social services report, I suppose, because it's not it's not our core business. But I, I, I feel like I'm speaking from a position of ignorance because I haven't seen a report from Tom. So um, you, I may well know a lot more than I do. Suzanne does know about it. She was at the meeting where this came up uh, a couple of days ago. <laughs> okay, and um, so just for clarity, it's a report that's by Tom Narbra, not by Tom Bowring. Um, so Tom Narborough is the project I, I manager apologize. for yeah. GP triage um, and, and what I would urge members is that um, it, it's, a pro, it's a pilot project that is currently funded through till March 2021. We have heard that there may be some um, additional funds for transformation going forward but we don't know what that might look like at this point. We are waiting for further um, further advice from Welsh Government and then potentially to go through, well, we'll need to go through the Regional Partnership Board. Um, and so with the, the report that, that Councillor Thomas is referring to is that I had said that given that I'm in an integrated role, uh, that there is a report that is reflecting on, on what progress has happened with the pilot to date and the intention to um, to continue that would be, would be where we would want to go. But as Lance wants to come in. Lance. Um, thank you, Chair. I, I, um, I, I suppose the, the report that has just struck me, the report that social services routinely bring it, um, and I think it would be due in January, but I will have to check, um, would be the report regarding the regional partnership arrangements. And that that is previously, I suppose, where that GP triage um, uh element would be considered assuming it is january i i think that would that would seem a sensible way to to bring that in if that was agreeable to everybody but i would need to check unless amy knows off the top of her head um when that report is due yeah well, we should should have gathered up more information then suzanne shouldn't we yeah absolutely um, bearing, bearing in mind that this is going to be introduced uh, as, as Suzanne's just said, uh, March 20, this coming March, March 21, uh, um, uh, the proposal is for that. I think that's what you just said, wasn't it? Uh, so, so at the moment, what I'm saying is that currently the project is only funded through till March 2021. It's subject to approval going forward of both funds and the project itself. 
Um, and so it would be appropriate to bring that as part of a wider report that Lance is certainly um, advising around um, the regional partnership board that would be the annual kind of um, report. And by January, we would know what the outcome of the funding situation is and what the plan going forward would be. Um, and just to reassure members, that means that in your current roles, I'm happy to, to have those conversations with you, but it just feels that that would be a better way from a scrutiny committee, that would be a recommendation. Okay, thank you. Just to confirm, just to confirm committee, the report is expected in January. Okay, well that makes a lot of common sense then to, to leave it. So we've got all the information that we need. So um, back on to agenda item six. I have no, um, no chairman's urgent items. So once more, thank you all very much for your attendance. Have a good evening and see you all next time. Keep safe. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Bye bye. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Bye bye. Cheers. Good Take night, care. Everyone. Good night, all. All right, close.